All right. So now we're live. Now the internet has decided to catch up to what I'm trying to do here. That's one thing I'm still bad at battling is the internet connection keeps dropping out. Doesn't make for good <laughs> videos, does it? Or good of me being on time. I'm only 10 minutes late for getting on. Everybody was sitting in another live video waiting though. So as everyone comes on over, welcome, welcome. Thank you guys for sticking with me. The internet is, they can't figure out what's going on with it, but I'm here. <laughs> so that's a first step. It's been a few weeks. I kind of had to just step back from a lot of this online presence, but thank you guys for sticking with me with the videos I'm posting and communicating with me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Hello in Kazoo. I think that's so fun. Hey, Leo. Hello, everybody. Everybody, everybody. This is so awesome. Um, so I am in my new digs. I don't have a setup yet. So we're just sitting here in a random room with a couch and everything um, doing a video. And who cares? We're here, right? Welcome, everybody. Corey, Lisa, everybody. Thank you guys for joining. Um, yeah, doing good. I had surgery last week. I know many of you will ask. I had surgery last week, and I'm feeling really good from that. Um it's only been a week, but to me, I need to be back up and running. I can't, I, I can't be held down here anymore and I need to get up and get doing stuff. So you're so welcome, Charles. Yeah. I'm loving the new house, getting a little settled in with the girls and we're figuring things out and I'm learning lots of life skills, like dealing with contractors, you know, like just painters and stuff. Um, so a lot of learning is going on in my world, <laughs> but it's really good. Uh, it's been really good, really empowering and, and everything. And the girls are loving us. Thank you guys for asking and being concerned. So let's dive in. And hey, Tiffany, happy birthday last week. I missed your birthday. So happy, happy birthday. Um, let's dive into our questions. That's why we're here. I'm Carrie the Mortician and I answer any of your questions you throw at me. Um, if they're commonly, commonly asked questions, I will tell you to go check the description of this video, which has a lot of links to a lot of the most common answered qu or asked questions that there is. So, all right. That first question at the beginning, someone asked why if I go cremate my dog, is it so much cheaper than if I try to go cremate, you know, mom? So, Fido and mom, we're going to compare. Uh, pet crematories have a very, very, very low overhead. They don't have a huge staff. They don't have a big facility. They do not have to meet up to certain codes like a funeral home does. Um, you can't just go right to the crematory and cremate somebody. Most places. And some states, the funeral home and crematory are different businesses. So when you have to go through a funeral home to cremate someone, you have a fee from the crematory and that's it. Then you have the, all the payments that you have to do with the funeral home for the funeral home services. So it's that's why some of the differences. You'll encounter pet cremation places that don't do removals. You have to drop off or else they're going to charge more. Um, you can choose sometimes commingled or individual cremation. So that's also going to affect the price of your cremation for the pet. There are permits and fees that medical examiners charge and things that are associated with human cremation as well. Also, uh, four pound turtle, or is that big? I don't know. <laughs> turtle. Um, cremating that is going to be a much different price than cremating 250 pound Uncle Gene. So you've got different resources being used, a lot less gas to operate the crematory. And if, if the retort's up to a certain temp from maybe cremating a couple dogs, it's not going to take hardly anything to cremate a little rabbit or a little hamster or something as well. So far different resource amounts that you're using too. So there's a lot of different reasons they're going to be different. Um, Carrie, I saw a video on TikTok about casket candy and I was wondering, do you ever get casket candy? No, I have no idea who this casket company is that sends candy with their caskets. I'm down for like cookie <laughs> cookies with the caskets. Like 
anything. Send me something with my casket purchase. We get nothing. I've never seen anything. <laughs> Is it against the law to bury your cremated dogs with you when you die? I have three that have been cremated and I want them to be buried with me. So it depends on the state. This was a big thing in the news. Was it two years ago now that New York actually changed their law that pet cremated remains could not be in a human cemetery. So now they can be. So it really depends on the laws and such. If you go and slip in somebody's pet with them and nobody knows the difference, then it is what it is. Um, I only can be, you know, I can only uphold the law of things that I know are happening. I don't know. My husband was buried in January. What was the white band around his neck? D, I have... I have no idea. There's no context to that, really. So it's hard for me to say what white band was around his neck. What would you advice would you give a new mom while you go in the funeral service? As far as time, family management, I truly feel it's a calling, but I won't want to miss out with my littles. Jessica, I think you're first. Have you gone and like shadowed at a funeral home? Have you spent a day or two with a funeral director so you really see what the whole business is about? Um, if you haven't, you need to. It's something I will tell anybody interested in the business is make sure you understand actually what the job entails. The warm and fuzzies and the little bit you see of what a funeral director does when you attend a funeral is just a small little glimpse into what a funeral director does all day, every day. The schedule looks like um, kind of what the workload lo work looks like. So I don't think it makes a really big difference if you're a new parent, if you're single, if you're married, if you're older, or if you're younger. It's all about the place that you work at because everywhere has different schedules and how you balance it with your home life. So it's going to look different at every funeral home for anybody working there, depending what, you know, their situation is. So as a new parent or having littles at home, it all depends on one where you work at. And that's going to be any business you are doing, any career. So those are two big things I would say look at what some different schedules are like, and you're really going to have to vet out the funeral home you work for before you go to work there, or else you could be completely turned off of the business by one bad work experience. I've been watching outdoor public cremation. I notice they pour thick orange yellow substances over the body, then stack everything with wood. I find other cultures interesting. I, Kathleen, I agree. I love learning about funeral and burial customs and cremation and burial and everything and all these other cultures and countries and things. Um, especially, I think everybody got a bigger glimpse of what happens with the funeral pyres when there was a hu that huge COVID uptick a few months ago and we saw all these funeral pyres taking place and 24 hours a day and people end up to get their deceased in there and so I think we all got a bit a better glimpse as to what happens during some of that. Yay Kate you got your certificate your celebrant certificate. I want to fix up my mom's grave, but I probably need to make a lot of noise for a short time to do it. And I feel like it's disrespectful. Well, it depends what you're wanting to go in the cemetery and do. A lot of them don't allow you to really do much um, to a grave space. You can weed, you can plant maybe a few things around depending on the cemetery rules and regulations. But yeah. How common is my grandma had aggressive cancer, lost almost all her weight, so frail at death. They had us bring a scarf because her neck was fragile. Any experience similar, like fall off fragile? I would say probably so thin that you could see that a lot of times you can see like the tendons and things and are just pressing against the tissue. And when they're laying, it's even more prominent. And that might be what they were say saying. Um, it would have taken a lot of tissue filler to fill that all in. So possibly. Um, Vera, my mom was buried in 1959. My nephew wants to bring her down to Missouri. Is that even possible for a 60-year grave? Definitely possible. Uh, there's a lot of factors there, though. A lot of things that 
you're going to, they'll have to, you know, the funeral homes will have to do some research into in the cemetery to see kind of if there's a vault, if there's not a vault, if you pull her up and the vault has been filled with water or something, you may have to then pay for a recasketing fee, a new casket, disposal of the old casket, disposal of the vault, a new vault on the receiving end. So there could be a lot of really large charges that you're going to encounter if you do this. And that's the big thing is people don't realize the fees and the amount that you're going to possibly pay. It's almost like having a whole new funeral sometimes in order to move somebody from one place to another. Can you have an open casket if someone has COVID? Yes. Yes. If an individual has been dead for a while and is just a skeleton, is the family allowed to take the skeleton home for a home funeral? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just going to keep going. Yes. Um, during this. So perfect. Um, why do some funeral homes place a lace cloth on the lid of the casket? It almost looks as if the decedent, you're looking at the decedent through a curtain. Uh, so I am going to say this is called a funeral veil. So Jody had sent this question to me. So Jody, check out my two minute video on funeral veils. That's that lacy or very thin mesh kind of thing. They will hang up from the top of the casket down over where the person is laying um, to give kind of a uh, filter, almost like on your phone when you turn on portrait mode. It gives a little filter to the viewing so that way maybe if the person has some flaws, some damage, things like that, then they are going to not look quite as bad. And it also keeps people from touching the deceased. Kathleen, what's the liquid that's poured on the body? I'm going to guess it's an accelerant of some kind, some kind of an oil or fat lard based something. I feel like I remember reading about something that they use for that accelerant. I'll have to look into it more again. How long is it possible to spare an empty casket? I'm guessing you mean like store one. Is there any best before date on them? There's not, but if it's wooden, it's going to get really warped uh, over time and may just crack and fall apart almost on you depending how it's, how it's stored. What's the most strangest thing a decedent has done in your care? There's nothing strange that a decedent has done. Um, I mean, they're, they're dead. They do nothing. So there's no involuntary move. They're not like kicking and, and swinging arms. It's not like a chicken when you cut its head off when somebody dies. Um, they're not moving around and getting all crazy. They're, they're just dead. Have you ever had to hold the hand of a child or very emotional family member as they viewed their loved one for the first time? What did you tell them to help their experience? Well, you can't help an experience. I mean, the first time somebody's coming in and they're going to see their loved one, there's nothing to stop it from being painful or sad. I have stood with hundreds of funerals at this or hundreds of families at this point um, when we walk in and go up to see their loved one. And it's, they're going to react how they react. Um, yeah, some, I know uh, there's moments I'll kind of talk to them. I'll let the, I'll be quiet for a while and then I'll maybe say something. And it just depends on the moment or I'll talk about their shirt. I address that the person is there and not ignore them in the room kind of. Um, so I do some of that, uh, but it is emotional and it's sad. And sometimes, and I mean, it's sad for the people all the time, but not for me all the time. But once in a while, it's definitely a much harder moment than others. Who embalms bodies from medical schools for anatomy classes? They seem to be embalmed in a more extreme way. Definitely. It's a different process, a different fluid solution to preserve the body in the way that it's preserved for medical school. And it just depends. Sometimes like in Cincinnati at the mortuary school, they do the injecting of the bodies for a lot of the area medical schools. Um, near me, they have embalmers on staff. So when the body is donated, they're taken there and then their staff embalmer does the injection for the donations. Do 
you have any videos about funeral pre-planning? -pre oh, that's, yes, I've done several. I just have posted two in the last, this last month. Um, so that I have quite a few. Hey, Royce. Hi, buddy. Hi. Um, Marshall, I don't have a favorite part of being a funeral director. I like I like being able to do different areas. It depends on the day. Sometimes it's nice to go in the quiet. Sometimes it's nice to work with people. It really just depends on the day. Thanks, Charles. I'm having a good day. In my area, there's a five-year-old child that has been missing since July. There's a picture supposedly from the day she disappeared. So many insist they can tell she is deceased. Is that even possible? They can tell she's deceased in the picture or that like they feel it kind of like medium style. Can you own two funeral homes and operations, both of them out of one of the funeral homes? This is a national board test question. Oh. So operating two licensed funeral homes out of one facility. Well, Technically, there are places that do it because they have an online and they have an in-person, but both can have the same mailing address and everything. I would say yes, but I have no clue. <laughs> um, if that's really what you mean, that's an interesting. So here's the thing, guys. I think I would probably fail my national board if I had to go back and take it right now. So much of the information you don't ever encounter again or words, you terms you never really have to use. Um, I, honest to goodness, no clue. But I can get out my mortuary law book and start digging <laughs> if I need to. What is my greatest win as a funeral director? Like you made a straight up miracle happen for a family. Oh. I'm trying to think if one like pops in my head. I don't know if there is a specific one. There are definite funerals that you get to the end and it's done. And you, you don't realize how much you've been tense for days until it's over. I'm trying to think of situations, like small situations I think of where maybe there's kids or, uh, and they, you can tell had a good experience, if that makes any sense. Like, you know, that they connected with what was happening and they're going to remember something about the day of their parents' funeral. And it's, that's important. Um, or maybe getting a song somebody wanted, like pull it out, you know, download it quick and use it. And, there's just moments that you do things. I do things on the whim and I feel like, yes, that was perfect. Like that was a good connect moment. Like there was a song. So there was a family and they played a song and I got in the car and I played that song on my phone on the drive over. Cause I was driving the hearse over to the cemetery. And then at the cemetery, as the pallbearers started walking, I was with a casket as well. I started playing the song on my phone out of my pocket and they just thought it was the coolest thing. So, you know, there's things like that. Like you've got to read the crowd essentially and know the family you're working with to be able to do some of those little extras and kind of just pull them out and um, not wow and not make it be about you, but just, just add a little something to the funeral. I have a prearranged funeral. What if they go out of business? Well, that money is not with the funeral home, only that locked in pricing contract. So your money's always there. You can use it anywhere. You just don't get that locked in price from that funeral home. So that money should always be there. Philip, I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you doing? Um, haven't seen you. I, I haven't seen a lot of people. I, I see that I call this seeing you guys, <laughs> even though you're just staring at me. Um, is it true that poppy seed can throw you for a loop with drug use? Well, drug use is not my authority here. It's being a mortician. So you'll have to ask the poppy seed question elsewhere. I recently wanted to have a natural burial and have someone plant a willow tree on top of me. We just don't know where to be buried. I know some cemeteries will not allow the tree plantings. Yes, that's a big thing that cemeteries won't allow trees because 
25 years down the road, you're going to have this big old tree growing up over. I think I have been thinking also about a private mausoleum. So to me, these are two polar opposite, building a huge stone or granite, you know, or marble building and having a natural burial. These are very conflicting kind of things you wanted to do. Does life insurance cover one? Depends how much your life insurance is for. Can you be naturally deceased in some type of enclosure, whether vault casket or something else inside? It depends on the rules of the cemetery. Some cemeteries require that you're embalmed if you are put into a ma mausoleum of some sort. So it really just depends on the rules of the cemetery. Will they allow animal remains to be placed inside? Kind of we talked about that. It depends on the state law if you can have the cremated remains in with the burial. Can family members with access lift the casket to view a loved one inside one of these? This is the thing. So typically in these, you also have that uh, big slab of stone, either granite, marble, whatever it is, placed over you. So your family's not going to be lifting that unless there's a lot of family members there. Um, so no, you're really not getting peaked at. If or when you have no one to access the building, what usually happens? Um, the cemetery will sometimes have the key to the mausoleum, so they can have access as well to it. So it depends what kind of mausoleum you're talking about. Um, if it's just like a four-person unit or something or a one standalone crypt, it just it depends what kind of mausoleum you're talking about. Do funeral homes offer tours if someone calls and asks for a tour? Some do. Some are more open to it than others. It depends on what's going on that day and how busy they are and stuff. But you can always ask. <laughs> Tiffany, thank you. I think someone earlier also wondered if it was the ghee that the Hindu cremation used. Um, it's a clarifying butter and it's used for anointing the body. Can an individual be cut in half and a part of them cremated and the other buried? Would you feel comfortable doing that? No, I would not. And that would be desecration of a corpse or a deceased. So it's not really allowed. Um, I, I would guess you're, you could find probably a funeral home who will have you like sign some waiver and they would maybe do it if you really wanted to. I don't know. I mean, like what would what would the purpose be? I guess is interesting part. And would you cremate the top half or bottom half? Like I feel as if there's way more that I would ask about the situation. <laughs> you would be asking me. <laughs> oh, oh, Steve, you, I'm Thank you for coming and resubscribing. Joni. Yeah. You're with me. Which half would you cremate? Yes. In the pictures, they say she looks deceased. Look up summer wells on YouTube. Okay. So I'll have to remind me to look up Summer Wells. I have nowhere to write down. I have never practiced in Oklahoma. I've never been to Oklahoma. <laughs> um, yes, I have never. I'm watching you on YouTube, if that is what you are trying. Yes, I'm on YouTube. What are the rules of cremation remains being spread? I have actually a two minute on that, but... You cannot spread cremated remains on private property. That includes state land. That includes beaches, waters, parks, forests. You can't just spread cremated remains there by law. You have to have a special permit from the owner of the property or special, you know, allowability to do that. So that is the law. A lot of people break it, um, but that is. Oh, Heidi. Your binge. When people say they binge watch me, it just makes me like, oh my gosh, it's it makes me like a little embarrassed and stuff that people would watch me. It's crazy. Is there a way to inter the body so that we can continue the, to view the bodies forever? You could do some kind of a plexiglass something that you could have viewing or little cameras or something. Um, it would have to be a, a bit of a setup to do that, um, but you could encase somebody in a plexiglass mausoleum of sorts. Um, think Snow White style, just not outside, sitting by herself in the glass case thing. Uh, I think it could be done though, kind of like the saints. 
uh, are people who are, you know, in line to be sainted, that they have different um, viewing setups in different countries. Oh, let's, can you spread the remains in the ocean? So you need to have permission from the Coast Guard um, and have them take you out. Are you planning on any more celebrity videos? Crystal, what do you mean by celebrity videos? I have not had a celebrity on yet, but man. Oh, Stephanie, that's awesome that your coworker knows. This last recently, I posted something on Facebook Marketplace for sale and someone saw my name and they that lives around somewhere and they're like, oh my gosh, I love your videos. I was like, what? I just can't, that uh, floors me. Can a funeral home legally deny the responsible party of a decedent just sent to view the body because of the condition of the body? For example, a motorcycle accident. So you have every right to view your loved one. The funeral home cannot allow it and you can move that person to a different funeral home. But that's the funeral home's right as well that they can deny you because of mental anguish or some any other thing. They may not feel that just having you sign waivers is enough. So it's kind of up to the funeral home, but you have a right to see that person. You just might have to move them to a different funeral home. So... Can the family shave off all the deceased individual's hair or can they only take locks? I have shaved somebody's hair. A mom wanted to keep her daughter's hair and we cut all of it was off. Um, so it's really up to the family what, you know, they want to do. My 20-year-old brother passed back in December. His skin tone was light. After him being embalmed, his skin color was like a grayish ashy color. He died of fentanyl overdose. So this is a problem is that drug interaction with formaldehyde and preservative fluids, we cannot control all, all, all the way um, because the body is processing drugs that are in there. And if they gave, you know, if he went to the hospital and got kind of anti-drugs and then you've got all these drugs in a system and then we're embalming, it can neutralize the embalming fluid very quickly where they look good and then bam, a few hours later, it's all neutralized and it basically is, is void, everything that we tried to do. Um, so drug interaction is a huge problem when it comes to embalming because it counteracts the embalming fluid. Can someone have such a bad disease that they have to be cremated and even if they don't want to be cremated? Um, I will have to look. I, f I think Ebola, the CDC, might that might be one that we are supposed to cremate right away, not bury. Um, a lot of things, though, you can do an immediate burial rather than a cremation if they will not allow embalming. So that might be something like crutchfield Yakov disease is one. Some embalmers and funeral doctors will not handle those individuals aside from doing a direct burial or a direct cremation. So that's one of the things that just depends too on the comfort level of the funeral home. Oh, it is hot and humid here in Michigan as well, Pat. So it is, ugh, it's pretty nasty out. Kathy, thank you so much. Aw. Hey, Jack, um, you asked if I was going to be in Tennessee. I don't know yet. I need to look at the dates now that I'm kind of getting settled in to my world here. Um, look at the dates and really see if it's going to work or not work. Um, does my job question my Christian faith or does it strengthen it? I think both because after death is as much a mystery of non-quantifiable. I don't even know. Um, you know, I can see acts of God in places and I can, I know that there is truth in that. I can't see heaven. 
and what happens to our person after death. So it's not that I don't believe in it. It's that the more I'm around death, the more I'm like, come on, I should know by now, or I should have this concrete knowledge <laughs> room scene, and it's not there. So it's one of these, you've got to go, you know, with both, both sides. Some days I'm like, man, and some days I'm like, yes, leaning into it definitely. And sometimes I just, I do pray for strength and things. And so it just depends. Someone asked me the second um, disease. It's Crutchfield Jakob's disease. And you, I'm going to go blank on how to spell it. C-R-E-U-C-H Crutchfield Jakob. And it's Jacob disease. It's basically, I think it's it's mad cow of the human is the easiest way to do it. Where do I find out about green cemeteries in Michigan? Go to the Green Burial Association Coalition online um, and that will list them all out for me. Do I believe in ghosts? So I don't believe in ghosts, but I believe in paranormal experiences, which is an unexplainable event happening because I've had them. So I'm not going to tell you there's ghosts there or there's this or that. I'm going to tell you things happen. I cannot explain. Hello in Charlotte. Are you going to the Charlotte Oddities thing? Is that next weekend? Are you going to that? I thought about driving over for it. Do you ever feel your mom around you? Well, my mom's alive. So I feel like she is always around me <laughs> in a good way, I guess. I do. I feel like my mom is watching over me. I Yeah, you know... Um, there's times I do feel like presence of people that I've lost, grandmas, grandpas. Sometimes I smell my grandma very strongly, <laughs> I might add. Uh, and there's no other explanation than maybe she's here. I don't know. Oh, Danielle. Yeah, Lamont at large. When I went to view a family member in the hospital mortuary, her mouth was open. I could see her tongue was removed. Is that normal during an autopsy? Yes, the tongue is um, a good amount of time removed during an autopsy. Tiffany, thank you. Yeah, that's the, there it is. Am I more of an introvert or extrovert? I think it just depends. I, if I'm not feeling like going and being social, you would never know it because I will be very much an extroverted person and settle into a situation. Um, but it feels forced sometimes more than others because if I'm not feeling it, I'll still do the kind of go through the motions, but it just depends. You can tell when I'm more comfortable or, you know, whatnot, but it takes a lot of energy to be an extrovert, I feel like too. So some days I'm good with just like chilling and doing my thing and, and not interacting with a lot of people. So that's why I think that the balance between being a funeral director is good because some days I'm encountering lots of people. Some days I'm not encountering hardly anybody. And so I think it's a good flow. Are funeral homes haunted? I do not think they're haunted by the, the spirits of people that have died that are brought there. I think that there's things that are there pre-existing if a place has some paranormal activity. Pat, it's to, um, why are the tongue removed? What are they looking for there? It's just as part of when they open up the neck and they go up into the neck and kind of look, sometimes they just remove it as an organ. because they remove all the organs. So let me do a couple more questions from this one. Why, uh, I believe you've been asked to support, but if you could have a career change, what would it be? Or do you think you'll always remain in the funeral business? Um, she had also asked, would you still do this work if I won the lotto? Um, I think uh, that I would do something still in, little, I would do something investigative, probably. I like mysteries and investigating. I don't know. I mean, if money was not a thing where I could just kind of go do whatever I wanted to do. I And she also asked, did it, would I do something philanthropic and start like a, you know, a project, a philanthropic project. And I don't know what it would be. But I would definitely like to do more of those kind of things. 
I would love to travel to schools more and speak to students and kind of help bolster up um, excitement about this business and excitement about this career. I would totally do that for free if I didn't need it. <laughs> I would love it. Um, I love doing that kind of stuff. I don't know. I think there's a lot of different jobs that I don't even know exist. That would be super fun. Like people who have to be testers for different products, like what kind of fun products would there, would there be to test, you know, and, um, undercover shopper, I think would always be a fun one. Like, Hey, go try out this nail salon or Hey, go buy a soda from this gas station and then report back to us on everything. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Uh, that was like a big thing a few years ago. I remember that you could go make extra money being a secret shopper, secret shopper. Um, what else would I want to do? I would not want to tend garden. I hate flowers and gardens. I'm just looking outside right now and I'm trying to think what I would want to do. I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, I would love to go like dig up old bones somewhere and, and do, you know, forensic anthropology type work and archaeology kind of stuff. That would be super fascinating too. Yes, I have read part of the book, Stiff. Um, I've, we don't have coroners in my state. Have you ever considered being a coroner investigator in your state? We don't have coroners. Uh, they're medical examiner investigators. And I have, but the county I would do is the largest county in Michigan. And it's ridiculous <laughs> um, because you can't even get from one side of the county to the other in like an hour. So it's, it's, you could be bouncing from one side to the other, to the other, to the other, and it would take forever for your day to even have, you know, so uh, some of that I think is, is why I probably wouldn't want to do it. I would enjoy, I think the interaction with families and um, you know, some of the scenarios I can maybe see and encounter or would just be interesting, but the other logistics of it would be yuck. Yeah, DMOR, I think, would be fun. They don't get deployed a ton, and it is hard to become a part of DMOR. If you don't know what that is, I have a two-minute on DMOR, and that's the disaster response team that would come from the mortuary side when you have a big disastrous event. I am going to be a professor at a mortuary school, so I'm going to be teaching a class for um, Pittsburgh here coming up and hopefully getting to do a little more of that. Can a loved one be buried in the same casket as a loved one who got exhumed and is a skeleton? Um, if you can reuse the casket. More than likely, you're not going to want to stick a fresh person in the moldy, mildewy interior, but I may... That's up to you, I guess. And it would be really smelly. What's the funniest memory you have when I'm being a mortuary student and apprentice? Um, I mean, my memories, when I think back to mortuary school, I'm not thinking really specifically about class. I think about like global that we did on Saturdays and karaoke on Wednesday nights and the millions of pounds of hot wings and tall Brewster is it Brewster? No. Buster. What are the tall beers at Applebee's called? Aren't they Brut Brutus's? Brutus beers. Uh, Bud Light. Like we went to, it was around the corner from Memorial School and we went there all the time for happy hour and wings. And, you know, so those are memories that are more dominant to me uh, than specifically what we learned in school. I've never loved sitting in class. It's never been how I learned the best. And maybe that's why I like to educate in a different way because I I am not a sit in class focus sort of learner. I've always wondered how people do that and learn that way because it's just not me. But uh, so I don't know. I don't go back to much more toy school memories, I guess, when it comes to that part. However, I mean, I do remember a few things from school. I remember just sitting in the lounge in between class and 9-11 happened while I was in mortuary school during our final exams. So that is a big memory I have from mortuary school as well. How common is the horrible penny pinching disrespect planning conference? Like no care for the deceased and money isn't an ab issue, just horrible family. Um, not too often, 
most families, I will walk out saying, oh my gosh, I love that family. It's maybe one in 50 that I just don't click with. They are really aggressive, different reasons. Um, so it's not too, too common, but it just depends to the amount of calls you do and the type of business you run and everything. I looked up Summer Well. She doesn't look dead or passed away in her picture. Are there any weird laws related to morticians or funerals that are silly and not needed? Oh, gosh, there's so many laws, especially it's more state laws. I mean, if you go through, uh, look, Google like the weirdest state laws that still exist, and you're going to be blown away just by general crazy, like you can't drive a Ford and eat Pringles at the same time or something. I don't know. I'm just making that up. But things like that, that are just outlandishly off the wall that you don't understand how they could even still be on a law book somewhere. Same with mortician. Like you are not allowed to curse around the dead. You're, you know, just different little things like that, that who's watching and who's ever going to, I guess, unless there's cameras and somebody records it and then turns it in and most police officers would be like, what, what do we even arrest them for? <laughs> you know? Um, so there are some silly little things, but they're there for a reason. Do you hear about the man who was buried faced down above Marilyn Monroe? What's your thoughts on this? Um, I don't know if that's accurate, but I'll look it up. I do have a little more pep in my step. Um, so we're getting there. I'm still, for my surgery last week, I'm still pretty tired and... Um, yeah, it's, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> What's the call volume of most of the funeral homes you work at? Oh, it's all over the place. The one that I work at has, they do like 900 to 950 or so a year. And, but I fill in for small ones that do like, you know, a hundred a year. So it just depends. Yeah, you guys will have to, like Tiffany looked up, you can't ride a horse faster than 30 miles per hour in Denver, Colorado. So you guys will have to look up fun uh, laws and post them down in the comments below and let me know what fun laws you come up with. You legally can't curse around the dead. Which curse words are the ones that are illegal? Is there a list? <laughs> I know, right? Like what is considered a curse word? Can I say heck? Can I, I, I don't know. It's, it's so weird. I'm funeral apprentice and going to school as well. I never forget it. this experience. Our death calls a year is 800 to 900. Yeah, that's a great exposure is a high volume funeral home. I think everybody at some point should work in a high volume funeral home, like over 500, you know, if not way, way more just to get an experience of that kind of a, a facility. Are photos taken of the deceased and in the morgue or at the scene of the death? Can the family get access to them? If it's a death scene, they should, as part of the investigation, would have photos on the file. You would have to ask the medical examiner and see if they would allow those photos to be released or not. Jack, in New or in Kentucky, you can't put ice cream in your pocket to steal a horse on Sunday after 5 p.m. So, like... How, who came up with that? Like, who did something naughty with ice cream in their pocket, stealing a horse on Sunday after five, but it's okay before five? <laughs> like, who does this? Are death certificates signed and filed online if the state has an online program? So, um, I have to show you guys, I got, do you see my new koozie? I made a whole bunch of these and I'm selling them in my student group right now. Um, I'll probably add them to my online store. I love them. I just think they're super fun. Super, super fun. When viewing a de decomposed body, what do you tell the family before they see their loved one? Um, it would depend what the situation was, I guess. If I'm telling them you're going to notice an odor or... There's a lot of cosmetics. Try not to touch them. Or it would depend on the situation what I would need to tell them. S 
someone new video series the ABCs of being a mortician. Do you know what's funny is I have a list of some ideas and that's one of them is ABCs of being a mortician. <laughs> Carrie, have you had a service where there was no one officiating, no celebrant, no clergy? I it was awkward and yeah, I ended up thinking what would Carrie do and I asked if they'd like me to just talk. I've been to, I mean, I've officiated quite a few services there are some times where there's a miscommunication and maybe someone thinks that they're going to speak for like two minutes, but the funeral director gets the impression that that person's going to lead the whole service. So you almost need like an MC to welcome everybody, invite somebody up, introduce a song. And so you might have to step in to be that kind of spokesperson for the event, so to speak, to let everybody know what's going on. Pat, I love that you have wine in my coffee with Carrie mug. Yeah, uh, Little Miss Funeral did start in the EBC series of videos. So she is working through the letters. I am not a chaplain. No, I do have my online ordination in order to marry somebody. So I can marry people. Um, but what, it's called a celebrant. If you are non-denominational speaking funerals and such. Are you ever going to do a video with Caitlin again? Um, probably at some point. So I'd be open to it. I really enjoyed the videos we did and we email um, once in a while. And yeah, strangest song played at a funeral you did. So just because this song played the other day and I actually told the person I was with when it came out, I was like, hey, I've played that at a kid's funeral. So it was Enter Sandman at a child's funeral. He was like two-ish years old, I believe, if I'm thinking of the right funeral. I'm trying to remember if it was, um, I think it was actually the five-year-old, a five-year-old's funeral. The two-year-old also had a song that was a bit crazy, but the five-year-old, he had Enter Sandman. And so it was really creepy when they do the, now I lay me down to sleep part. Like, yeah, it was just odd. Tibetan sky burial. Yes. The Tibetan sky burial would be fascinating to witness. That's where the body is battered up and beat up and the tissues left to get a little funky. And then they drag the what's left up into the mountains and the vultures eat it. A whole huge like thing to it and ritual and routine and it's really fascinating, but it's just this one community that does it. Are you going to let your daughters cook for us again? I really liked watching them with you. It was fun seeing you with them. I don't know if uh, I'll do a cooking video. I they'll They'll do something again soon, I'm sure. We'll have to find something that they can be in on a video. Did you and your husband break up? Yeah, no rings. We are divorced. Um, we divorced a little while ago. So um, that's why there's a lot of transition right now for Carrie the Mortician. Just landing in my new house and my new space and getting everything finally settled after a lot of transition. And I had surgery last week and stuff. So hopefully this is the end. At the top of the mountain, Headed down the other side now, right? Uh, so very cool. I'm going to wind down because we're approaching like 50 minutes. Woo! So I figured this one would be a little longer just because it's my first time back in a little while with you guys. So thank you so much for coming for support. If you're not subscribed, click subscribe. Guys, we're almost to 90,000 subscribers. So it's like the final, into the final 10,000 to get to that 100,000. I had a friend challenge me and say they wanted to see that dang Google play button. And I was their only hope <laughs> for them to see one. So we said, you know what, let's just keep doing what we do. Um, do what I do organically and keep building and we'll get there one day, hopefully. Um, but help do your part. Click the subscribe button, share videos. If you find them to be of importance, somebody else will too. This is good knowledge to share. It's not just people 
being interested in death and things, there's a lot of good videos for veterans and people pre-planning and, you know, just obviously curiosity about all these other things too. So share a video and pass on the word. And thank you guys for joining and I will see you soon. Bye.